So first, um, we are going to create a geometry and um, let me show you a quick example what kind of things we are trying to do here. Um, I'm looking for a video. Give me one second. Hello, everyone. My name is Sumin Han. Let me find the video. Okay, it's gonna be a similar kind of process of this kind of video. Yeah. This was done in other software, but yeah, we are we are going to do something like similar to achieve that kind of stop motion animation of some geometries. All right. So firstly, let's create some geometry. So I'm going to use create and with polygon primitives, we are going to use platonic solid. Just click on it and control A, control A. You can see that this platonic solid has few options. So if you are interested in looking at different models, yeah, you can look into here, but I'm going to use icosahedron. All right. I'm going to make a jellyfish like leg, yeah. So for this, I'm going to control D to create. I'm not gonna do very precise, but yeah, something like that. And then I'm going to create bridges. Yeah. So I'm going to combine this mesh, combine, mesh, combine, yeah. This became one geometry, but it has all this uh, dirty transform information. So you are going to go to edit, delete history to delete that. So it's clean, it's all good. And now I'm going to start, select the faces and start to bridge some of these faces. So I'm going to bridge maybe this two and Go to edit mesh bridge in the option. I'm going to check few things. So if you don't have division, if you say apply, it has like a bridge like this, but we need some division. So I'm going to add maybe two or three. Okay, three looks good. Uh, you can do uh, a lot of different things. You can make a smooth pass and give a little bit of taper like that or twist, but we are not going to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oops, let's not do this custom. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to bridge maybe these two, apply, maybe this. You notice that I'm selecting, uh, I'm not selecting a face just next to it to bridge it. I try to like have some distance. So I'm not going to do like the one that adjacent to the bridge. So that's important. That makes the geometry cleaner. Okay, this looks pretty good. All right, so if you press three, it's gonna look like that. I think it's, as a, as a base geometry, I think it's okay to start with like this. Okay, another thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy this, just control D, I'm going to turn this on, um, control D, I'm going to make maybe two different options. And let me make, I'm going to start making a blend shape. 
in between uh, three different stages of this geometry. So let me just show you what that means. I'm going to, just in case, create three geometries. I'm not gonna do anything with this. So for blend shape, you need to make sure um, that the topology, the amount of vertices, the amount of faces needs to be exactly the same. Uh, and you need, you should not deform from an object level. You should deform from the element level, uh, vertex level. You will see what I mean by that, yeah? So I'm going to use the vertices and I'm going to make this guy maybe uh, fat. So I'm going to go to edit mesh, transform, and I'm going to make this guy super fat. Yeah. And then this guy, maybe I'm gonna make this guy, let's think about it, maybe uh, a scene like this, something like that. And maybe I'm just exploring. You can try a different uh, deformation. I'm gonna make it super thin first, and then maybe add some kind of thinness to it. It's not a great topology though, but uh, I'm gonna just uh, accept this for now. Um, let's see what this gives us. Um, or, sorry, maybe uh, I'm gonna just make this fat and flat. I think that's gonna be better. Fat but flat. Yeah. So this one will be flat. This one will be fat. This one is normal. So what blend shape does, it's going to take the topology of the target geometry and try to morph to that target geometry. So the first one, let's say first target, I'm going to just uh, name it target one, target two. And this one, this one is, I'm going to work with this one. This one is just our original geometry. Oh, uh, sorry. This one is target two. This one is original, original. This one is just for a reference. This one is target two. All right. And what blend shape does, you can see. So you click on, on the model and you click on the target. I'm going to move this a bit. So we have no original target one and target two. So we are going to morph from this to that, from that to that. Okay, let's see what that means, all right? So you go to, you select this guy, you go to, I'm going to save this project before I lose anything. Uh, blend shape. Okay, always save your project. Okay. And then you go to modeling, deform. And the first thing is the blend shape. So you go to the option. Oh, you don't have to go to the option. Yeah, but you want to you have to go to the option and check what uh, either you go, you check local or world. So what world does is um, from here, you still select the, the one that you wanna blend and you select the target by shift. So you select those two. And if I tick world and hit apply, you see there is a blend shape created here. And if you try to change this one from zero to, I'm going to, I'm selecting this parameter, middle mouse click and drag to the right. This is morphing in the uh, world, uh, world uh, location as well. It's changing the 
uh, location as well. I don't want that. I want this to be in position and just change it, change the morph morphology. But one thing I noticed is that I made a wrong uh, target. So I should have selected the target first and then the one that I want to blend. So I'm going to control Z, go back, make sure I don't have any blend shape. Okay. So you select the target and then shift, select the one that you want to blend to and say local, apply. You have a blend shape. Now you have it applied as a target and as a local. Now it blends from this to that. That's awesome. You can have multiple blend shape in one uh, geometry. And now you have target, second target, shift, select this guy and apply. You got another blend shape here. So it morphs from the original one to the target too. Okay, that's great. Um, and we can also animate this by control S by, we are going to extend this to around, for now around 3000 frame. And let's say we are in the first key First, you can, you can go to the key by typing the pre precise key here. And then you select on this guy and you, I want this to morph from original to target one first. So I want to key this, key selected, select the key, select the parameters, right click and say key selected at number one frame. And after you go to around 150, you can type it here. And then I'm going to change this number to one, select the key and right click, say key selected. So what it does now is it animates the morphology. Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this guy to morph to this guy after that frame. So what I'm going to do is I go to that 150, no, 1,500 key with this guy and select the target two and right click, say, key selected. So this is still zero. And when it comes to 300, 3000, this should be one. So right click and key selected. Okay. Now this is going to become fat and then become flat. Okay. That's cool. Let's see how it goes with our, uh, yeah. So you can, you can also keep on changing these original geometries to affect the blend shape. Let's go back. Yeah. Another thing we can do is now the location of this can be also different. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a curve. So I'm going to use this to draw some curve, but I'm going to draw it from a front view, for example, or right view. Yes, I'm going to draw something like this, just for Just for fun, yeah. Okay, enter. You can always right click control vertices to modify these vertices. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, doesn't matter. Yeah, it's just a test. Yeah, now I'm going to make this one be spatial. Okay, this can become a really interesting base chair lines or any furniture lines. I think this one is a nice curve, but I think it's a bit too big. So, okay. So let's say uh, that's my curve. I want this thing to move along this path. So that's really easy to do. You can select your geometry and the path and go to animation and go to constraint and motion path and attach to motion path. Yeah, so it's automatically picking up the frame size um, but this one has oriented this guy weirdly. So let's go back and look at the options. So constraint, motion pass options. Let's say up axis, we wanna keep it as Z. Let's see. Yeah, and you can of course change the time where to start, where to end. Yeah, you can check that. But now we just follow the default and apply. This is snapping weirdly. Front axis. Okay, this looks better. Okay. And uh, what does this snap is, if your model is somewhere, somewhere, uh, somewhere far, you need to, you want to set up, uh, you want to move it closer to this guy. But if you, but if you, for example, DB, DB to snap, it doesn't snap. Uh, you you want to V, of course, V to snap. It snaps to the end. Okay, that's... That's good to know, but normally it doesn't snap. Yeah, it doesn't want to snap to any control point of the curve. So for that problem, why do I? Okay, for that problem, you want to select this geometry and say display and go to nerves and say CVs, control points, control vertices. Then you can snap to these points. So I can now snap to any of these control points. Okay, but anyways, you just need to have this close enough to the starting point, yeah? And I'm going to turn off that display. That display is uh, doing per, per geometry. So you have to do it one by one if you wanna show up some information like that. Okay, let's say apply, sorry, select these two and apply. Okay, kind of oriented it uh, weirdly, but I think it's acceptable, yeah. And now this will, this will follow this path and it will end at 3000. So let's have a look. So it does that and also keeps the blend shape animation as well which is interesting. Okay, so um, so what can you do with this? You can, you can, what's interesting about this method is that you can use this thing called animation snapshot. So you can go to animation, visualize and snapshot. You can here, create animation snapshot and go to the option. And I already changed this parameter, but you want to have <coughs> from, from the first frame to the last frame, but maybe every 
hundred increment, I create a snapshot. So this will be different from any animation. So change this parameter and then say apply. Then it just creates the snapshots of your geometry. Well, that's interesting. Um, so let's say I'm gonna have a little bit more. So I'm gonna move this number down a little bit, like 50. Okay, that's too much and maybe 75. Okay, maybe a little bit 60, sorry. Okay, let's say that. <clears throat> and you see there is this geometry group generated, snapshot group one, and you can click on it and say three to see what's the result. Yeah. <clears throat> also, if you select, click on something and if it's still pink, it means they are still connected and it's, it's live. So you can still modify this curve. Uh, and while you modify this, you don't want to modify this uh, geometry. So in order to, uh, in order to do that, you can create a layer and put this snapshot geometry group here by right click, add selected, and just uh, lock the visibility of it. <clears throat> This way, <coughs> sorry. this way you are not going to select. Oh, excuse me. So in this case, in this way, you are not selecting the geometry. I think, I think here you are also not selecting the geometry. Yeah, you are selecting the curve. That's why it pink became pink. Yeah but it's not very clear. So I'm going to use the wireframe view and you can still modify the overall curve. Let's see how it looks like. You can still keep on modifying them. If they're too sharp, they are like uh, turning weirdly. So you might wanna fix some of that. Yeah. Also, I feel like, yeah, this is, there are not too much differentiation or I wanna change the morph a little bit. You can come back to your original target geometry and make some modification on vertex level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use uh, B soft selection, B select some vertices. And so if I make changes, it updates. Okay, gonna do the with this guy, just to give some differentiation. Okay, and then maybe I'm gonna, I want to also work with some side. It, this is not good geometry. It's too flat and it's intersecting to each other. Yeah, but yeah, you will have better geometry for your own project. Okay. Mm, yeah, so what I wanted to do is I'm gonna scale this. If you scale it in vertex level, not an object level, it's applied as morphing. Okay, I'm gonna... It's very visual and quite intuitive. I want them to 
be more interconnected. Yeah, but became too flat and intersecting. That's not great. Okay, let me, you can, the, the, the object location doesn't matter anymore because it's not, we didn't tick world. So that's why it's good. I think we can make this one slightly bigger. Yeah, I want them to have some com connections. Yeah, but the original geometry, uh, you need to uh, fix this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just modify this guy. This applies to, yeah, the original geometry. Okay, anyways, you can play with this. It's pretty fun to work with, yeah. And let's see, ooh, <laughs> I think it's not a good geometry, yeah, but it's okay, yeah. We, we are, okay, so we unlock this. I'm going to control D. This is still live. You can still make changes. Uh, so I'm going to make a group of all this blend shape uh, set. And, and for all of this, I'm done with it. So I, I finished modeling with this method. I'm going to hide it by control H. But I have connect, I have a copy. Only thing I'm very uh, unsatisfied is about this intersecting thing. Yeah, but I'm going to ignore it just for now. Um, don't try not to have that kind of moment in your model. Mm, okay. So this one is uh, a geometry that you can now render and do whatever. So. I'm going to use this guy. Similarly, it's a group of geometry. I'm going to select all of them, mesh combine, and I'm going to delete all the transform by uh, edit, delete history. Okay, so that's great. We have a geometry that can potentially be whatever. Yeah, so maybe I'm going to make a copy. It's always a, a easy trick to make a symmetric geometry, right? So minus one to make it symmetric, it will always look better. So yeah, I'm gonna combine this and make a little bit of deformation because it's too symmetric. I'm not very happy with that. So I'm going to just make a twist. Uh, you can use lattice deformer. Uh, you always want to change the, delete the history to clean that up. I'm going to just add a bit of um, twist. So there's a nonlinear. Deform nonlinear, and you can use the twist. Okay, we can always change that. So apply twist. I'm going to, so twist, I want it to twist like from vertically. So I need to rotate the handle by 90 degree. And their start angle, end angle, I'm going to just explore. Just add some twist. You can always have some. You can move it away from the pivot. Yeah. Okay. It's really up to you. How do you want to work with this? Yeah. And then I'm going to accept this. 
So once you are happy with it, I'm going to just delete all this history by accepting it. Or I can simply just make a copy, control D. And I can just like put it inside this group. So I don't have to, I can still access it later. Okay, once you have a, a happy geometry, uh, name it my, my geometry. Okay, and let's start rendering this guy. <clears throat> 